Hi there, everyone. Welcome back to 3 News Now. Today is Wednesday, June 2nd. I'm Stephanie Haney. Thank you for being here for your top stories from WKYC.com and our WKYC app. We start off with what made for a very scary morning at a Cleveland Heights elementary school. And let me start by saying no one has been injured, but there were shots that were fired outside of a Cleveland Heights elementary school this morning, and a suspect is now in custody. This happened outside of the Noble Elementary School, and according to Cleveland Heights Chief of Police Annette Mecklenburg, officers responded to a report of shots fired around 10.25 a.m., and the school was placed on lockdown while officers investigated. Police found that a woman and her mother were sitting in a vehicle outside of the school when the woman's ex-boyfriend allegedly drove up in his vehicle, got out of the car, walked toward the women, and then the women attempted to drive away. At that point, the man is now accused of firing shots into the car. Neither of those women were hit by shots. They did then drive to the Cleveland Heights Police Department, and that's when they learned that the suspect fled the scene in a white SUV. He was later picked up about an hour later in the Superior and Euclid area in East Cleveland, and they took him into custody, so that person now in custody. Now to the big news of the day. Today is June 2nd. This is the day a lot of people have been waiting for. The Ohio health orders are lifted throughout the state of Ohio. Now, Ohio Attorney General Dave Yost responded by burning his mask in a post on Twitter. He posted this a couple of hours before the orders were lifted, and it's him burning a mask, a surgical mask, to the tune of fire by Jimi Hendrix. He wrote, in honor of the expiring health orders, with the tweet. Now, here's a reminder, though. Businesses can still require you to wear a mask and other COVID-19 safety protocols. They're just no longer required by the state. That's even if you're fully vaccinated. And if you're not fully vaccinated against COVID-19, Ohio Governor Mike DeWine is asking for people to continue to wear a mask and follow distancing measures while indoors. There are a few health orders that also remain in place, by the way, those mandating face masks at healthcare facilities and nursing homes. And those facilities, as well as grade schools, are still required to notify residents, students, parents, or other people who are relevant to the situation about any positive or probable COVID-19 cases. Now, there's been a lot of reaction on social media about this big change today, something a lot of people have been waiting for, but something a lot of people are also not necessarily ready for. One person on Twitter wrote, Ohio lifts their mask mandate. I can't wait to see all the smiling faces. Another person, Nicole Rose, wrote, never wore one to begin with. Show your smiles, people. Now, when we asked if people plan to still wear a mask, Mary Kaiser Geshwind said, yes, she is vaccinated, but she has two children ages 10 and 8 who can't be vaccinated yet, so she'll keep wearing a mask to protect them. Karen Polvenale says, Yes, too many unvaccinated people out there, and she'd rather be safe than sorry. Now, asked if people were ready for the state to reopen, there was also mixed reaction. One of those reactions came from Magda Swartz, and she says, nope, the disease is still riddling other nations. It still exists. We're once again just bored of it and are pretending that it's gone away. Another person said that they were hoping that businesses would be able to recoup money lost while they had to be closed and while they had to limit capacity and those kinds of things, questioning why it took Ohio so long. Now an update to what's happening in the Canton area. Canton McKinley football player, a father of that football player, is saying more about why potentially the coaches were suspended for the football team. As a reminder, eight McKinley football coaches, including head coach Marcus Watley, were placed on administrative leave last week. The school hasn't confirmed the reason behind it. The school did, though, say there was an incident that occurred on Monday, May 24th, that they were looking into and that those people were on administrative leave. The father, local attorney Ed Gilbert, is saying that his 17-year-old student athlete, who's a star tackle on the team, has a 4.0 GPA and received scholarship offers from two college football programs, was forced to eat food against his religious beliefs as a punishment for missing practice due to an injury. He said it was Thursday, May 20th, when his son mis missed practice and then had to eat a pepperoni pizza as punishment when he came back on Monday, May 24th, and that the family hasn't eaten pork in about 10 years because of their Hebrew-Israeli religious faith. He said that the family is distraught by the situation. He says, we don't understand how this could have happened. We want to get to the bottom of it as well, and if we have to go through a lawsuit to do it, then it's on. He said that 
His child told the coaches repeatedly that he doesn't eat pork in the past and also repeatedly during the incident and that the coaches eventually, head coach Marcus Watley and the other coaches eventually let him pick off the pork and some of the cheese, but he still had to eat the pizza and that the student is now seeking counseling after the ordeal. Now, again, the school has not confirmed this was the reason for the administrative leave. Now let's take a look at the latest COVID-19 numbers. These first ones come from Johns Hopkins University globally. The total number of cases is now in 171,323,440. Here in the U.S., we have 19.4% of those cases. That's down a tenth of a percentage point from yesterday, with 33,290,961 reported cases. Across the globe, there have been 3,683,015 reported COVID-19 deaths, with 16.2% of those deaths, that's down a half of a percentage point from yesterday, here in the U.S. That number is 595,422 people who have died in the U.S. related to COVID-19. The Ohio Department of Health reports there have been 334 new reported COVID-19 cases in the last day, and we do have more data on updated deaths at this point. We've seen 62 more reported deaths since we last got that information on Friday. That total number now at 19,923. 91 more people have been hospitalized in the last day related to COVID-19 with 670 people currently in the hospital. Out of those, 174 are in the ICU right now. We've seen 16 new ICU admissions in the last day. Just over 40% of Ohioans are fully vaccinated. That's close to 4.7 million people, and more than 13,000 people have gotten their second dose of the Pfizer or the Moderna vaccine or their only dose of the Johnson & Johnson vaccine in the last day. More than 45% of Ohioans have started the vaccination process. That's more than 5.3 million people, and more than 11,000 people have started the process in the last day. Now tonight, there will be another announcement of winners of Ohio's Vax a Million Lottery. That's for adults to win a million dollars and for a student ages 12 to 17 to win up to a four-year full-ride college scholarship. If you need to enter, you're too late for this week, but you can get in on next week's drawing and the one after that and the one after that because this is the second announcement of the winners. Again, that happens tonight at 7.29 p.m which will be live on Channel 3, also on WKYC.com, our Facebook and YouTube pages, and our WKYC apps. You can head right there at 7.29 p.m. to find out if you or someone you know is the latest winner. To enter, visit OhioVaxAmillion.com. That's Vax, V-A-X, a million.com, OhioVaxAmillion.com. Or you can call the Ohio Department of Health at one 833 Ask ODH. That's one eight three three four two seven five six three four. Now, as President Joe Biden really pushes to get seventy percent of adults at least partially vaccinated by Independence Day, the fourth of July, there are new incentives that are being offered in what is being called Biden's Month of Action. Anheuser Busch announced a promotional giveaway this morning. It says it will buy Americans who are twenty one and older a round of beer once that seventy percent goal is met. So a free beer if, Ohio, if uh, not Ohioans, Americans get to 70% vaccinated. Also, the White House is partnering with early childhood centers such as Kinder Care, Learning Care Group, Bright Horizons, and more than 500 YMCAs to provide free child care for a limited time. That's if you're looking for a shot or you need assistance while you're recovering from the side effects of a COVID-19 vaccine, which I can tell you, that second one really knocked me out. I had to take a day off work to recover myself, but I'm glad I did it. I'm fine, and I am vaccinated and protected now. The administration is also launching, launching a partnership to bring vaccine education and doses to more than 1,000 black-owned barbershops and beauty salons. Now, this is based on a successful pilot program that happened in Maryland. And Vice President Kamala Harris has been assigned to lead a We Can Do This vaccination tour to encourage shots. That will also include First Lady Dr. Jill Biden, Second Gentleman Doug Emhoff, and Cabinet officials. Harris will focus on the South, where vaccination rates are among the lowest in the country, and the other people will travel to the Midwest with below average rates. Right now, here are the numbers. 62.8% of adults in the U.S. population have received at least one dose of the COVID-19 vaccine. The people who are not fully vaccinated, 130, oh, excuse me, 133.6 million people are fully vaccinated.
Speaking of presidents, former President Donald Trump's blog page has been taken down, and that's a permanent thing. As of today, what used to be the desk of Donald Trump, it was a web page that said from the desk of Donald Trump, it now redirects to an email sign-up page. His senior advisor, Jason Miller, told CNBC that they're hoping to have more information soon, but they don't have precise timing, and they will be transitioning to something else. He was banned from Facebook and Twitter following his response to the January 6th insurrection at the U.S. Capitol that left five people dead and many people injured. Shortly after leaving the White House, his team said that he would be launching his own social media platform, but they did later say that the desk of Donald J. Trump page was not the new social media platform. We don't have any more details on whether he will be joining another social media platform or what that might look like. Now, if you're following the Kentucky Derby, which a lot of you are because... This is one of the top stories on WKYC.com. We now know that a failed post-race drug test has been confirmed for Kentucky Derby winner Medina Spirit. Now, if you remember, there was an illegal substance detected in a test, but the owner of the horse said that it was because of a topical treatment. Well, a second test has now confirmed a presence of the drug, and there is not allowed to be any presence of the drug detected, or you will be basically disqualified from the race. So right now... The owner is looking to retest those samples, including a DNA test. The owner says that they expect additional testing to confirm that the presence of the beta-methasone, that's the drug that was found, was from topical ointment Otamax and not an injection. It's not clear if that necessarily makes a difference, but if it is found, if it is upheld, we can possibly expect to see the runner-up be renamed as the winner of the Kentucky Derby. Now, the racetrack says they're awaiting official notification of the split sample test results from the Kentucky Horse Racing Commission before making any decision on a potential disqualification. Another thing to let you know before we go here, did you know that today is National Leave Work Early Day? It is. So with that, we'll end this now. I'm just kidding. There is one more thing to tell you, though. If is Wednesday, so that means it's time for your It's All Good News show. That's up on the WKYC YouTube page. That goes up every Wednesday at 1 p.m. with lots of fun stories guaranteed to make you smile today. We've got a very important pup date for you. Also, a really good story about someone getting back what's theirs, a group of people really coming together to make that happen, and a pretty inventive approach to uh, getting together an engagement ring. So go ahead and check that out on the WKYC YouTube page. I'll see you next up on What's New with your trending stories in the Clicking in Cleveland segment from the WKYC studios. And I'll see you back here tomorrow for more 3 News Now. Between now and then, everyone stay safe and be well. I'm Stephanie Haney.